Greetings, survivors and friends. Shadow Frax here with your weekly dopamine hit of Rust news, where I've dug up as much information as I possibly can about what's here and what's coming, including scoops on a new vehicle and musical instruments. But first, it's that magical time of the month again. You know which one I mean. And small quarries everywhere hate him, because as promised, the giant excavator monument has carved a niche for itself on a server near you. Hopefully as long as that server's thick enough, but more on that in a moment. If YouTube's been blessing you with notifications like a good subscriber and you've been watching my vids, then you should already know what you need to about this mammoth monument, which doesn't just sit there looking rusty, but is fully operational. However, I will still give you a quick rundown. Get yourself some diesel from the compound at 300 low grade a barrel, or find it lounging around at the oil rig's junkyard or sphere tank. Not the dome. This is a dome. This is a sphere. Rubber up to survive the rads here. Fight your way past the Blue Man group and insert aforementioned diesel into the tank in the core. Fire up the Jenny and make your way to one of the two control rooms at the front. Choose which resource you want to mine, then grab it as it spews out of the two hoppers at the other end. Simple. Whilst it's technically possible to solo it, you'll probably want to bring a friend or ten with you, as with all the points of interest being spread out and whatnot, it's very easy for someone else to roll up and put a crimp on your day. Especially as it starts grassing you up on frequency 4 treble 7 as soon as you turn it on. The excavator will only spawn on maps over 3.5 k depending on the seed of course and indeed this is the case with all large monuments now with maps under that size being devoid of them as well as large mountain prefabs as of this update this is a move to both improve performance for players with less advanced potatoes and provide them with more room to express themselves on small servers in turn barren maps which are the most performance friendly places to be in rust now spawn oil rigs harbors and water wells plus if you have less than the now recommended 10 gig of ram and try to join a server over 4 k in size, you'll see this warning message. You can still join, but on your head be it. There have been a number of attempts to improve performance for you nonetheless, including some bottlenecks that affected the water system being widened out, leading to a massive optimization on the back end, which is now running 10 to 12 times faster. Rust's terrain shader is now doing a much better job at filtering out unnecessary work, which should lead to a 5 to 10% performance gain on mid-quality graphic settings, getting better the higher you go. The team are also testing a new compiler backend for the game client this month, IL2CPP, with the goal being to both improve performance and security, and a public test branch will become available at some point in the near future for you to try it out. And they will need guinea pigs, so keep an eye on the Play Rust Twitter account for when that happens. Of course, I'll tell you too, so subscribe to me here. A new terrain anti-hack measure was brought into play this wipe, which has no qualms about murdering any players who either deliberately or accidentally stray under the terrain somehow. Of course, there will be false positives, and I've already heard about one or two, but if you do fall foul of one, then please let Face Punch know by either pressing F7 in-game or posting on the bug reporting mega thread on Reddit. This update sees a whole hanger full of fixes, including a bunch of UI ones that have been getting on everyone's nips for a while, including team member names requiring a microscope to read on the map, the size of the cargo ship map marker being the wrong size, the scope overlay being extremely small on high resolutions, misclicking except rejecting a team invite, text overflow on the team dock when players have long names, and accidentally pressing create team whilst dropping items on low resolutions. Not only, but also, binds not working with cinematic play and cinematic stop were fixed. The monument's console command can't be abused to find caves anymore, RF broadcasters can't be placed through walls, and furnaces can't be placed under terrain. Passengers can no longer access minicopter fuel tanks. There was a fix for getting stuck when dismounting a helicopter on top of compound buildings. Horses will eat an appropriate amount at troughs instead of wolfing the whole lot down, the hunter's jacket skin no longer looks too dark, and the coal in the train carts of the power plant is no longer a nice magenta. As well as this, for those of us who use demos, there was a fix for certain items such as doors showing as both open and closed at the same time. Praise be! There were also a couple of adjustments which I'll mention again for all time's sake, such as low grade at the compound now being 10 scrap for 20 and HQ metal exchanging for 2 scrap instead of 3 at the bandit camp. The server browser timeout limit was increased to 90 seconds, and of course, you can now place deployables under the water barrel. Wow. So, to works in progress now, and there are two particularly intriguing developments working their way down the pipe. Firstly, as you will have seen in the thumbnail, within the last few hours a new larger, player pilotable helicopter model was made public, and I'm glad it was because I really wanted to be able to tell you about it. No date for when this will be in game yet, but it looks like there'll be plenty of room inside for not only a pilot and his friend, but several Zerg members in the back. Looking at the cockpit, it seems that as well as a fuel gauge, there are dials for heading, speed, and altitude, and I can only hope 
hope these will all be functional. Of course, I'm sure some of you have questions, but this is still only a model, and there are a lot of things we don't know, such as whether we'll be able to craft it, or whether it'll just spawn in the world like the minicopters, how many of them there'll be per server, what fuel it'll run on, and most importantly, how many horses we'll be able to fit in the back. Stay tuned to this channel and my social media accounts, though, and you'll be one of the first to find out when I do. Secondly, the other big news in the commits was that a new instruments branch is being worked on with playable musical instruments being experimented with such as cowbells, tenor drums, trombones and violins. Do I really need to dig this meme up? Yes, I do. There are no models for these yet, but it seems there will be some depth to their function with support for assigning a range of notes to an instrument instead of just one note pitch shifted, and this could end up providing us with hours of quality entertainment, because giving drum kits and things that go parp, clank and screech to a room full of hyperactive children is always a good idea. Is the thought of impending auditory warfare making you fret, or is this all music to your ears? Do you think this is a pointless addition that will lead to the further decay of mankind, or does that really depend on what you think the point of Rust actually is. I want to know your opinion, so tell me in the comments. Also, in case you missed it, I just released a new episode of Concept Limbo with ideas for nuclear power, shields, NPC types, and espionage. So go and watch that next. Thank you for watching again this week. You're up to date now, so please spank the like and subscribe buttons into submission. Join me on Twitch, where I stream each week. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Discord, and my Steam group for updates and other fun stuff. Support me on Patreon and get access to a special section of my Discord where you can ask me stuff. Links in the pinned comment, and I shall catch you all soon. But in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio.